Lord of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the giants and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. As we have been noticing in yesterday's tape, and among the previous tapes as well, nearly 10 to 15 odd, we are learning more about the things which is quite essential for us to understand what is dispensation. The review of the entire subject is that we are answering back Zakir Naik, at the same time correcting our Christendom pews, who have been occupying in the pulpit if they could ever become missionary by becoming maturity in the word of the Lord or the pastor teachers who are training up the flock wherewith Lord has given to them the greater responsibility and care of all time because it is his flock we are feeding and when we are not able to accurately handle this truth whatsoever you are feeding is a sheer rut the things that you have been telling is a miserable misery to their own souls and spirit. Salvation by works is not there. They think spiritual life is doing morally good deeds is not there. Resurrection is not the point wherewith they think cloning. All these things are sheer out of a lie coming straight from the mind of Satan to the so-called moron preachers who are not even aware of the original languages of the scripture, particularly the Greek, Hebrew and the Aramaic, and try to discern the truth in contextual context, particularly into the subject of categorical realm, wherewith the word is so clearly written and kept for us. It stands written as it stands finished when it has been told, tetelestai in the Greek, at the sixth phrase which we shall exemplify in the future things, but now we are exemplifying the fifth phrase, with our answer to answer by Zakir Naik concerning whether my Lord Jesus Christ was been crucified on the cross or not, we are answering him back, telling to the point the seven phrases which my Lord spoke on the cross, first to cross check with this whether this were the words the words of eternal salvation for us wherewith Lord accomplished it once and for all, number one, salvation number two, our spiritual life after we believe upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and number three, our resurrection, the resurrection is guaranteed for each and every believer it is not only for all such kind of morons who think it has not been guaranteed because they have not passed some sort of tests or the legalism activities which could be termed as Christian moral degeneracy or Christian immoral degeneracy. Only these people who are right in the sight of the Lord can pass this exam. No way, no chance at all. At the faith of Christ, when you express your positive volition, stating to the fact, Lord, I believe in thy beloved Son, who has done the work of well pleasing of all time, by removing the barrier between you and me, that is the barrier before believing upon the Christ, we, before believing upon the Christ, the saving work of cross, we were aliens and we were the one who totally been estranged in the sight of the Lord. But God in his grace once again brought us back through his love. That love being agape realm. That's what we are here to show forth. But not the same love of agape, but at least the love of philo, which is a brotherly love. And stating to the fact, what you want to be done for yourself, you do it and show to others. These things which are so great and so important for us to understand, that after salvation, our spiritual life, being to the status quo of that permanent standards of righteousness, wherewith Lord dogmatically claims in the book of Isaiah chapter 45, I have not taught you anything in darkness. Everything I have revealed it unto you in open realm with the righteousness and with the standards of mine. So that tomorrow if you could compare and tell back, my righteousness is the one that will reign forever and forever. And that righteousness which is there in one of the cherub of the Ark of the Covenant is what we are here to be satisfied. And that satisfaction work will never come by this 
people who are so calling themselves as religion heads, doing good deeds, following salvation through works, no way, no chance at all. This righteousness has been termed as minus R, which is relative righteousness. But we need absolute righteousness, which ought to be plus R. And how is it that we can get to that plus R? It is no way by, but by a simple act of faith believing upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for our salvation. And that work has never been done by any person of the human race because any person of the human race who has been born is spiritually dead but physically alive. Because of that Adam's original sin being imputed to him, what it happens at the moment of his physical birth, the first birth, the human soul which will be given by Lord at the second time, being since he has been born with that Natshama, the format soul, which hits with the divine spark to your physical realm when you are in the out of the womb exactly the same time lord imputes to you that soul so that you can become a living being and the same time god imputes to you because of his righteousness which demands adam's original sin to be imputed because of this adam's original sin what is happening you are being spiritually dead but physically alive but the second realm when you go to the cross that is when you believe upon the saving work of christ on the cross many of the people they foolishly call blood is the work no way no chance it is used as a metaphor because it shows for the saving work of christ on the cross and these things which are so great and essential for us to understand when we go through that cross what is happening cross has replaced this this insurmountable barrier this insurmountable barrier however we are how legal you are how moral you are how dignified you are how disciplined you are doesn't make it any sense that's what it says the works that you are performing even that works in the sight of the lord are ministers cloth because your energy of the human realm is not at all required in the sight of the lord your energy of a human realm will be totally burnt off and it will be put into the lake of fire but what are we here we are standing on that one good work which Lord has done on the cross. And that good work is that he died as a substitute of spiritual death for you and for me by crossing out that barrier and in fact even removing that barrier by the cross. And what is that cross? The barrier, first we shall know, then we shall know what is that cross. The barrier has six things in it which have to be removed. Number one, sin. As many people call, sin is what? John 16, 8 very clearly tells to us what is sin. Unbelief in Christ is the sin. Prior to that, what is the penalty of sin? Since Adam disobeyed the word of the Lord, wherein he failed to obey the Lord's word, what did he do? He stick on to his wife. The disobedience is what sin is. But this personal sins, whatever you commit in the lust pattern of yours, either towards legalism, or either towards your lust patterns, or either towards antinomianism, or lasciviousness, whatsoever you call, all the sins of the lust pattern of your sin nature have been brought down upon the cross and Christ has paid for you on the cross. And at the judgment seat of Christ when the two books have been opened, sin is no longer an issue because Lord has already paid for that disobedient sin of even Adam, which is reigning in us. Because until as we believe in Christ, the old sin nature will be resided apart. That is what we give retirement. That is, we are being dead to that old sin nature, but we are alive to the new person who has been born into us. But always there is a constant battle between this old sin nature and the new person, so that who has to control the soul, so that as you have been controlled, which is your driving mechanism for your four-wheeler car, so is your soul. If your soul has been controlled by this old sin nature, which has been there given for you at the moment of your physical birth, then you are yielding lust of flesh, lust of eye, and pride of life. If this soul has been controlled by the controlling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, wherewith you have been told to be always ruled or controlled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our realm of our human spirit, which will be activated at the moment of salvation, when we express our evolution in faith alone, in Christ alone, then this Holy Spirit will treat us into the manner of Christ, wherewith not grieving nor squelching, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when we are being there, when we are in the controlling power of, holy, of the old, old sin nature, but rather we are being in the Holy Spirit. And when we are in the Holy Spirit being baptized in this unique dispensation of the church age alone, which are very unique characteristics of this church age of dispensation, we are being controlled. Our driving mechanism or our soul will be controlled by the Holy Spirit. When we are being controlling of the Holy Spirit, our treating manner will be in the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. When we are under the controlling power ministry, or our treating is in the, our walk is in the Holy Spirit, what happens exactly? We are walking in light. 
because God is light and there is no darkness in it at all. So when you are in light, as you know very well, light and darkness cannot comply together. So your all sin nature activities will never be able to satisfy you, though you are being there with the all sin nature being indwelt as long as you die. This is what very simple logic which we have to understand. The prototype spiritual life which my Lord lived on this earth. He was born out of sin nature. He was being controlled by Lord God the Holy Spirit right from this physical birth. And when he went to the cross, he was there on the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. When he got resurrected, it is Lord God the Holy Spirit which raised him from the dead. And when he was being there appearing to those days of 40 days for this entire disciples or for the people whomsoever have been witnessed, he knew very well what was the power of the Holy Spirit towards this mortal body which turns out to become immortal in the hypostatic union being the mixture of those both attributes after his resurrection but not before his resurrection. That's why he could appear to them. That's why he could pass down to the closed door. But many people fail to understand what is the status quo in the future realm after when we die. Many of the people they are considering that God is spirit, the words that he spoke are spirit. So what is there in the spirit? These words will go back to the God and this body will go back to the mud at the resurrection time till that time all will be in sleep that's what many of the people are calling no way no chance at all this is absolute absurdity where the people are failing to realize and discern what is the future state many of the people who even fail to understand what is this doctrine how is it many of the people they think the idea of the departed spirits being in an unconscious state is as absurd and it is unscriptural because has Paul been unconscious for nearly 2,000 years if there were any truth in this notion could he have said to die is gain would it be gain to be unconscious would it be far better than to enjoy Christ here and serve him in his gospel and in the assembly when the Lord said to the dying thief today thou shalt be with me in paradise did he mean that he was going to become unconscious what then say with me in paradise if he was to be unconscious, what difference would it make where he was to be? When the blessed apostle says, absent from the body and face to face with the Lord, does he mean a state of unconsciousness? People fail to realize this truth. Had Stephen nothing but a state of unconsciousness before him when he said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit? It is most deplorable to find professed Christians holding such a miserable theory and rising and telling that resurrection should be replaced with the cloning and Lord has given his words so to the same body is going to give us that words and that words are going to in return become spirit what a sheer out of miserable theory these people are talking about it is hard to speak in measured terms of such a baseless absurdity as a ransomed spirit asleep in the presence of Christ may the Lord deliver his people from all such kind of vain and foolish notions and as long as you want to stick on to these things kindly excuse our strong language because God is light and in him there is no darkness at all no matter what may come we are here to preach the truth if you are not able to realize this truth it is left to you but as long as we are in this tabernacle it is our duty to stick on and to reflect because God is light and in him there is no darkness at all and since you have been given the provision of rebound not to be controlled by the all sin nature but rather to be controlled by the spirit what we have to do, we have to give top priority always to stay in our own divine palace, which is divine dynosphere, by learning and becoming edifying in your word. And that learning of the word individually is not possible, because the gift of a pastor teacher, Domato, which is given only to a male believer, is constant study like a drudge, digging in the truth, making to understand the word. We are here to tell to the people what exactly is Bible doctrine. And that Bible doctrine under the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is not possible until and unless you are being always under the constant fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that Lord could search you, your anxious thoughts, and make them to know whether this fellowship, what we are having, Lord, whether it is right with Him or not. Because many of the people, they come around and they say that, we are there, we are worshipping the Lord, our glory is going, but it is as simple as that keeping a big crusade in the sound boxes, as many as the people could hear, till them only the, the glory is going, but it is not even going to the roof of our hundred feet, on above their sky if they could consider, or else if it have not been passed even the first heaven, which the people will call the three heavens in the Bible. The first heaven being the climatical conditions, the second heaven being...
as per the Jewish notions in Talmud, the second heaven being the celestial space, and the third heaven being the abode of Lord and God of Almighty, which is heaven of heavens. You think you are directly sending glory to the heaven of the heavens, but irrespective of his righteousness, which is not able to meet, it is not even going to pass the first heaven, far less you think you are sending directly a prayer request to the third heaven. That's why Jeremiah was being told, do not pray for this man. For these people are backsliding, for these people are hard at hand, for these people do not have light in them. That means no truth in them. When you follow the principle of John 4.24, God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and biblical truth. So when you call spirit as truth, when you call spirit as his words, then what is that spirit which is mentioned in John 4.24? And you call for the resurrection, that spirit are his words, and that shall go back, and at the same time you are going to be asleep in an unconscious mode. Dear brethren, make it very 100% sure. The words of the Lord are alive and powerful. When Apostle Paul told, we shall stand face to face before the Lord. When Stephen was telling, Father, take my spirit into thy hands. When Lord Jesus Christ told to that thief on the cross, today you shall be with me in paradise. It doesn't mean to say that they shall be in a state of unconsciousness. But rather they will be in a state of interim body till the resurrection body could be availed to them. And that interim body, what it is, Lord knows very well than us. If you are not able to realize those simple things, if you are not able to correct the doctrine where you have been called for to correct, you are still in darkness. The more you are into darkness, you are not even be able to worry what is the truth. So this insurmountable barrier could be removed by whom? By Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by the saving work of Christ on the cross. And this barrier, number one sin, which is a sign of unbelief. Today's Christendom, people believe in gospel, but they are want to add, add works to their own gospel by saying that I have been morally right, I have been righteously correct, I have been doing X, Y, Z activities, so I will be automatically saved. No way, no chance at all. At the moment of salvation, by faith alone, in Christ alone, you are into union with Christ. And it is the duty of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to baptize you into that royal family. And that baptism of royal family has been done only by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to this unique dispensation believers alone. In the Old Testament time, it was endowment. In the millennium, it will be endowment. Uh, sorry, in the tribulation, it will be endowment. In the church age, it is filling that is controlling power, which is enlightenment. And in the millennium, once again, it is filling. Or once again, it is enlightenment. But there we produce the worship of the glory of Joel 2.23 but here we shall produce the worship of the glory to produce the character of God and these things are so great and essential because in the millennium Lord Jesus Christ is literally present for us when he's ruling thousand years but now Christ is absent from us so what we are doing we have to produce the character of Christ in us because it has been told very clearly no fornicator no adulterer no XYZ idolater or anyone who name it in the passage of 1st Corinthians you do not have them they that they are going to possess or inherit the kingdom of God. That is what we have been told in very clearly of 1 Corinthians 6.13, as meat is for the belly and belly is for the meat, so the body is for the Lord and Lord is for the body. And Lord knew very well, this is iconomas wherewith we have been set apart to show forth his glory in our tabernacle. And that glory is what it demands for us to live off all these basic fundamental corrections which when an unbeliever who is living morally or ritually right very well knows how pure he is in his body towards the Lord but we are not been called for that body we have been shown forth we have been called to tell the glory of the Lord putting the adornment of the word of the Lord it is not the blood which should circulate in your veins or vessels it should be the word of the Lord to be circulated and as the word of the Lord being burnt in you you know very well what it is to be in the light and when you are in the light, you know very well how to tackle those things which are quite essential against such kind of unruly evil apostate leaders who are being senseless, reckless, extravagant to the core. And even as such, this dichotomy person who is Zakir Naik, who is able to understand that Bible is proving that Lord was not being crucified. That is what his mind tells. And such kind of an unruly evil who is dichotomy to the core how can he understand what is the truth? Far less we, though we are having believers in our side, being trichotomous in nature. 
when we are not able to understand the simple barriers which is there between me and God. As said, before believing in Christ, I am an alien unto Lord. When we are not able to clear the simple barrier of understanding, the Zacharnaik tells that he has understood and is telling Christ has not been crucified and we know he is satanic to the core. But at the same time, the pastor recording who went to the debate, he would have been faithfully prepared. Then he would have told to this man what is wrong. That's what I'm telling to my peers. That's what I'm telling to my Christendom fellow believers who are there contemporary to me with this time. To study the word accurately. Dig the word. To accurately handle the word of the truth. It demands your preparation. Your preparation from the original languages of the scripture. So that you can clearly understand what is the truth. So that you can know how to discern it, how to tell dispensationally, so that you can know what are your privileges in this unique dispensation of the church age. Far less you can still think that resurrection is what you are still to attain. No way, no chance at all. Lord made it an accomplished fact, your salvation, your spiritual life and your resurrection. That's what we have in the Greek teleo. Oh, that means it stands finished. There is nothing you can work, but you can accept it by faith alone in Christ alone. The only thing which you can work between these two, between the salvation and the resurrection, is that your spiritual life, as long as you are alive in this world, or whichever could occur first, either rapture or your death. Because as long as you are staying alive, it is a trial for you that you experience that righteousness of my Lord, so that your spiritual resurrection, which is far better learnt through your spiritual maturity, could be attained, and that relative righteousness wherewith you have been comparing should be thrown off, and the absolute standard of righteousness of his terms, of his integrity, of his high standards, wherewith it has been told, if you love me, then you keep my commandments, looking and working into those things, not only your practical realm, not only your relationships between wife and husband, slaves and masters, or with the family members, whatsoever you name them, between your government rules, or XYZ, anywhere you have been termed, where you have been placed in the geographical location, you have been given that word of the Lord to deal righteously, because God is in light. If God is not light, then you are dealing darkness. And then once again you cross-check in that light. Once again in the mirror of the world you look what is your beauty. Once again you come back and dig the wall of the truth and try to understand what is there for you reserved and kept. Because even the angels are rubbernecking so that they want to know what is that the pulpit is going to preach. That is why we have been told in Ephesians 3.10, the greatest epistle of all time in mystery doctrine of the church age. He tells the church is a ground and pillar of truth in 1 Timothy 3.16 and 15. At the same time in Ephesians 3.10 he says, it is the place where the manifold wisdom of God through church, Lord wants to teach to those angels, even to the pews. And what is it that you are learning without the word? Even when Lord has been told in John 17.17, 17, sanctify them, set apart, keep pure for his work. How? Do you think by miracles, healings, or tongues, or XYZ? No, he says, it is by thy truth. What is the truth? Truth are many, but exegetical truth is only one. That is the order wherewith Lord has established in John 1.18, exegiomai. Many people come close to the erroneous conclusions. Many people write so many denominations because of their errors to understand and to rightly divide the truth. But Bible is subjected to only one interpretation alone. But this man who are failures to understand the truth, this man who are not able to realize that simple barrier should be removed, which is so great and insurmountable for an unbeliever, even as such for us, because we cannot work out our own salvation, but rather we go by faith to cross that barrier. This man are failures to understand what is the truth. Many are on examples of the truth. But Lord knows very well, only exigio my truth is what Lord recognizes. It is as simple as that you found your foundation upon the rock. Rock meant to say Christ, and his sayings meant to say his mind, which is Bible doctrine. And his Bible doctrine and his rock is clearly delineated or clearly told for us in the original languages of the scriptures of Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. And this rock and this delineation of the word is what it has been demanded for us to look and to understand. And when you build up your house upon that rock, that foundation, no matter whatever wind, whatever storm, whatever thing comes, it shall not fall away. 
and if anyone hears to his word that is bible doctrine given into your hands and if you do not construct as per his word that is without exegesis without exegesis without isagogical without categorical study it is like a man who has put his foundation upon the earth but not on the rock and when the disaster comes everything will be rolled off everything will be washed off so truth is what truth is not your own conclusions in your own translations truth is not what you think and what you hear from your spiritual fathers what you call as your divine mentors or as you call your human mentors truth is not what you listen through your visions and what you listen through your hallucinations or your dreams truth is biblical word truth is axiomai as per john 118 truth is his word truth is accurately handling that word and you know why lord has given this gift only to a male believer so that he can do the work of an heraldship with great authority by establishing his words through bible doctrine not to rule like a tyranny or not to raise anarchy but rather give the privacy of their soul in freedom because people come to listen to him the word of the truth because his duty is to guard the lips of his mouth with bible doctrine people will come to learn the treasure from his mouth the treasure being his written word and that written word could be revealed only to a male pastor believer through a right pastor teacher so that the gift of a pastor teacher given to them by the head of the church which is lord jesus christ known as domata can accurately handle this truth and make them to realize what is this the work that you are dealing in this earth dealing the divine nature in our human realm the two lord knows in our human realm we cannot deal this divine nature that's why he has given a constant indwelling ministry of lord god the holy spirit in us so that this indwelling controlling power ministry of lord god the holy spirit can recognize the divine things in the bible and teachers and learners through those things and a right pastor teacher from a original languages of exegomai because erroneously many people error in their translations and form the truths and say it is going to be in a state of unconsciousness for a long time if it were so then why paul said it is gain for me to die so that he can go and stand consciously there and you call the words which lord has spoken it is going to go back to the lord that is a wrong for you in translations get back in the original hebrew or original greek and look into those things and preach the word because god is light and if there is no light if you are still in darkness correct that by a rebound because anyone who has been cleansed with this thing he they shall not walk in darkness but they shall walk in the light so we are the children of light and not the children of darkness so the first barrier being the brick in that barrier is sin so either by a good deeds like as of 64 6 you cannot pass through or as told in romans 3 23 you cannot pass through that first brick is removed through redemption and it has been attained through unlimited atonement many of the few people who are the calvinists to come rise and say that atonement is for only few atonement is irrespective to any number of the human race who come rise again that is once and for all paid for the entire human race there is no way you can try to divide this truth and try to distinguish and say only for the elected is the atonement god is long suffering he wants none to perish it doesn't say he want only the elected to be saved or it doesn't say only the unelected to be perished he wants none to be perished both respective and irrespective both elected and unelected elected and predestined to do his work for maximum glorification as told in john 7:37 through 39 but the salvation that atonement is for each and every member of the human race irrespective of his religion irrespective of his caste creed or national or racial species that unlimited atonement is given for us in 1st timothy 4:10 and second corinthians 5:14 through 15 and the redemption is followed in ephesians 1:7 with first peter chapter 1 verses 18 through 
So the first brick of redemption, which is the removal of the barrier of bondage to sin and slavery to the sin nature, the price being the infinitely valuable work of Christ on the cross, as told in Galatians 3.13 as well. So this redemption is what is required for us first to be saved. If we are not been redeemed, if we are not able to look to that unlimited atonement, keeping at one point of meat, that is called as atonement, not M-E-A-T-M-E-E-T. -E so the second brick being the penalty of sin. So what is the result of that sin? If they fail to believe upon the Lord, as told in John 16, 8 through 11, the penalty of the sin is to be death of eternal realm. Of eternal realm in the sense, the soul which Lord has given to them will be there, the worm doesn't die, and the fire will not quench. So these are the things of the penalty of sin. And this penalty of the sin as told in Romans 5.12 and Romans 6.23 is what? Expiation. And what is the meaning of expiation? The payment demanded for sin was paid by the substitute of spiritual death by cross. By Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what we say in Colossians 2.14. Having cancelled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us. So this penalty of sin when we fail to unbelieve is what is death. But Christ erased that penalty of sin as well. How? By putting and nailing it everything on the cross, as told in Colossians 2.14, which is a doctrine of expiation. And third brick is our physical birth, the problem with our physical birth. That's what we have been noticing, the birth one. When God imputes the divine immortal soul at the point of our birth one, at the same time, the righteousness and the justice of God demands that Adam's virginal sin to be put or to be credited to his account. That Adam's original sin says he is physically alive but spiritually dead. So when we cross out this barrier that is through the cross, we shall be born in the second birth, only possible through when we walk through that cross, when we go through that cross, when we hang on to that cross. So this second birth is what I want to come to you after I finish this barrier. So this physical birth is what? As told in Genesis 2.17, dying you shall die. Romans 5.12 and Ephesians 2.1 What does it require? It requires regeneration. That is to be born again. That is your second birth. And what happens exactly at your second birth? You express your volition towards Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and say that you believe upon His work. And here at the second birth, your regeneration which takes place will be activated in your human spirit. That is the first imputation which is eternal life. And second imputation, because of that righteousness which has been credited to you, that eternal life will come into play. And the problem of regeneration is so great and essential for us to understand that without believing upon the Lord, we are dichotomy in nature. We are aliens in Christ because we don't have His righteousness, we don't share His sonship, we don't share His hairship, we don't share anything which Christ has in God for us. The only thing what God has apart from Christ is the wrath which abides upon you as an unbeliever like Zachary Mayak or any unbeliever in this world who follows Hinduism, Pantheism, Deism, Buddhism, XYZ, you name it and they have it. The respective of these 2,700 denominations in the Christendom, I think they have 2,700 lakhs or millions of religions in this world. And these religions, whomsoever you name it, they have it. Without Christ, the wrath of Lord. If they change, if they repent, if they believe upon the gospel of simple realm, the love of the Lord is to give eternal life and the divine imputation of eternal righteousness. When that righteousness has been satisfied of the cherub, of the Ark of the Covenant, and the mercy seat for your propitiation, that is what you shall have, the executement and enjoyment of your eternal life. And that eternal life to be trained up that human spirit to be trained up. By whom? By Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which teaches you are activated human spirit, so that you could be filled with the length, the breadth, the height, and the depth. The length representing the two power options. The width representing the three spiritual skills. The height representing the ten problem-solving devices. And the depth representing the unique stages of this adult spiritual life. 
this thing so great and so vast to be understood that our spiritual life is an accomplished fact our salvation is an accomplished fact that's why we have in our spiritual life the escrow contract we are within the escrow contract the escrow officer being lord and savior jesus christ the grantor being lord god the father and the grantee being we what is it the spiritual life being accomplished for each and every believer on the cross you have been turned out to become an invisible hero a winner believer or to reach to the maximum status of maximum glorification unto Christ. But you know what are we doing in our ignorance and arrogance? We are not able to realize what is our spiritual life, though it is an established fact which stands forever and forever it has been finished. We give top priorities and top preferences and change our scale of values to the lust things of this world. That's why we are not even able to worry what is our spiritual life. Some, in fact, even some of the people will never even realize what is the spiritual life in Christ. Because of the moron teachings, what they have been learnt in the pulpits. The reason being failure to exegete the word. Or to have a right pastor teacher who could train them up to the dignity of the clergy. But you know what is happening in today's Christendom, even the pastors are also morons. Reckless and senseless. More evil than Zacharyak. They are here to please men, but not God. They are here to fulfill their carnal sentiments. They are becoming like surrogates. But they are not here to take the responsibility of my Lord kept upon their shoulders to preach with that authority. They have become like namby-pamby, oily, greasy preachers, baiting the bush in the air. And what? In a month you have four weeks, and each and every week preach for one hour or even 45 minutes is what they consider is a great work for them and they go through that in a moody monthly magazine or some books or some cult of information in the internet about this resurrection about this cloning and this fools not able to understand what is the temple of the Lord which indwells in us as a trinity, we are to be formed as a Shekinah glory in Christ. And these people come and try to preach new events and the new earth. Once the flood has been washed out the entire earth, second it will be cleansed through the fire, fire representing Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The same fire which will judge our works at the judgment seat of Christ if you failure to realize what is your spiritual life. That is what you will dear would do as trouble. That fire will quench out all this earth. No unrighteousness. Because in righteousness every knee shall burn, every tongue shall confess that Lord is the Christ. As the waters covers the ocean, so the knowledge of the Lord will cover this earth. So our righteousness is a main thing to be understood. As meat is for the belly, as the body is for the Lord. So is our righteousness demanded in our spiritual life for Christ. To show forth his righteousness among this angelic conflict. What you do with a fellow believer is not what you are concerned with. You may be superior morally to him. You may be superior relatively righteous greater than him. But Lord is demanding his righteousness to be met. That's why he has given us his mentor, divine mentor, paraclete guide, the helper, the teacher, who could teach us, dig the truth, and tell us all those things from the word of the Lord. And if you're not in fellowship with him, and if you're not walking in light, what else is there for us to reason with you? Apart from to warn you and tell to you that regeneration is the key which gives us this birth, of second birth, the new birth, which gives eternal life to those who are dead in trespasses and sins as told in Ephesians 2 1, enabling them to be born into the royal family of God by the baptism of Lord God the Holy Spirit only in this unique dispensation of the church. So the two divine imputations, or number one, eternal life, and number two, righteousness, is what it makes us to satisfy in the sight of the Lord and to share all the things which Lord has designed for us in Christ. So this is a problem with the third birth.
third brick and we have the fourth brick which is relative righteousness there with people called to themselves as told in Romans 9 30 through 33 even as such as 66 64 verses 6 and this both things have been removed out by the imputation work of Christ that is divine righteousness and justification where with even the Calvinist theory failed to understand these simple things. So what is imputation? Imputation and justification it is a solution to the problem of relative righteousness. The perfect righteousness of Christ is credited to the account of the believer as told in Romans 3.22, Romans 4.3 and 2 Corinthians 5.21. On the basis of imputation God is free to justify the believer because he possesses the righteousness of God as told in Romans 4.25, Romans 5.1 and Galatians 2.16. And the sixth brick, the fifth brick, what we have is the problem with the character of God, as told in Isaiah 46:9. That with righteousness is what is required. Isaiah 64:6 and Romans 8:8. 8, 8. This problem with character of God has been replaced by what? By propitiation. What is propitiation? The aspect of the saving work of God through the substitutory spiritual death of Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, whereby the justice and righteousness of God are satisfied. The two cherubs of the ark of the covenant, so that the penalty for the sins of mankind has been paid, as told in Romans 3:25. 217 and 1 John 2 2 and then the last break what we have in this barrier is the position in Adam as told in 1 Corinthians 15 22 a but we have position in Christ the death that the solution which will be scratched out the death of Christ enables man to be placed in a new position in Christ serving his all relationship to Adam as told in 1 Corinthians 15 22 2 Corinthians 5 17 and Ephesians 1 3 to 6 thus the last barrier is removed and man has been reconciled so what are we we are in position of Christ as told in 1 Corinthians 1522b and followed with 2nd Corinthians 517 the blood of his cross the express which is used figurative language all these doctrines that accomplish reconciliation between God and man the work is finished the peace is made the reconciliation has been provided the cross of Christ has removed the barrier and satisfied every just claim which God had against us so that every member of the human race can be saved in the place of the barrier now Lord Jesus Christ stands between God and man as the way to eternal life and that's why our birth one is our spiritual death and when we cross go through that cross the Christ which stands between you and me is our second birth through regeneration where with we are going to get into consideration by believing upon Lord and Savior cross we have been born again and that being born again is what will be imputed that eternal life and righteousness wherewith now Lord and Savior Jesus Christ stands between God and man the work is been finished that is the salvation work the peace is been made salvation work is also accomplished even the spiritual life is also been accomplished the resurrection is also been accomplished the spiritual life is also perfectly accomplished because every believer has been designed for maximum glorification unto Christ but you if you fail in the scroll contract fail to grow up in the word fail to understand and look and to grow up for the growth of knowledge of Bible doctrine wherewith Lord has kept to you a scroll officer cannot do anything the grantor can cannot do anything because the grantee is a failure to give top priority for Bible doctrine so the work is finished, the peace is made, reconciliation has been provided, the cross of Christ has removed the barrier and satisfied every just claim which God had against us so that every member of the human race can be saved. So in place of the barrier, Lord Jesus Christ now stands between God and man as a way to eternal life. The one who removed the barrier through the blood of his cross becomes the door through which all may enter into that eternal relationship with God and Lord Jesus Christ said I am the door if anyone enters through me he shall be saved as told in John 10 9a and these people fail to realize what is the fact in doctrine rather than the fiction and skepticism as many people are following not able to understand the simple mechanics of the doctrine the way has been opened for all to enter and we enter by personal faith alone in Christ alone as told in John 14 6 justification redemption expiation regeneration propitiation and eternal life become our personal possessions when we believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and as told in 1st Corinthians 1 30 but by his doing you are in Christ Jesus who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption and in Romans 4 5 but to the one who does not work but believes in him who justifies the ungodly 
His faith is reckoned as righteousness. And in John 6, 47, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. And in Revelation 1, 5-6, And from Lord Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, that is Necros from the dead, to him who loves us and released us from our sins by means of his blood, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and forever. Amen. And these things are so great and essential for us to understand that the neck cross which has been meant for the physical death, not the thanatos which meant to say the spiritual death, and the Hebrew word mavat, which has its two importance of the word. Number one, representing the things of so great and essential for us to, to look the spiritual death and then the physical death. So the Hebrew word used in Mavat of Hebrews 53.9 of Isaiah, which is called as a plural word, but not a singular. But these people fail to realize. And this is what a failure on the Christian pulpit as well. Not able to tell them, not able to discern them, not able to rightly divide the word, not able to give them the top priority for biblical truth, but rather still become absurdities because the ground is not been firmly established upon the government word of the Lord. And their ground is been established in the hearts of their own desires and thoughts, modifying the scriptures to their own thoughts and understanding. That Lord, has, that Lord, though He has accomplished our salvation, our spiritual life, and our resurrection, people are still battling around to have a complete faith and receive by faith what the word of the Lord stands written when it has been told, it has been done, it has been done. When it has been appeared in the resurrected body, it is a resurrected body. When it has been told, they shall appear face to face before the Lord, they shall take it into consideration before the Lord. And these things are so great and essential for us to understand. But the pews and the Christendom leaders were occupying the pulpit, being indifferent towards the truth, will never realize these things because of the hardness of their hearts. They still want to jibe around foolishly with the things of this world, take advantages of this world, follow the footprints of Satan, but not follow the only one established and recognized rule by my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the pulpit to exegete your mind, to exegete the world. Since it has been a long tape of introduction, we shall have a word of prayer in the privacy of our soul. And today we shall look at the doctrine of the royal family of God in a review as well. Because I want to tell to you all that we are in this unique dispensation of the church age. In the unique dispensation of the church age, we are being baptized into the royal family of God. And this baptism of royal family of God, so that you can understand what is the royal family, so that why we have been baptized into that royal family at the moment of salvation, why we have been united with Christ forever in the moment of salvation, so that our goal, our purpose, our uniqueness in the characteristics of this church age could be very clear for us to understand, so that by looking at that at least we can give top priority for learning the truth, so that the more we can learn the truth, the more we can be set free. And these things we shall have with a word of prayer as we come back again. We are grateful, Heavenly Father, for the privilege that are given to us to have fellowship with thee through thy word. We pray that God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us the things that we are going to study so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. We could have a better understanding that we are a citizen of heaven, not the citizen of this earth in whichever nation we reside. Because, Lord, though we have been citizens of this earth, being born in the old sin nature, through the divine attributes of your Lord God, the Holy Spirit being indwelled in us, you have made us qualified to live as a life like a citizen in heaven, of heaven in earth. So, Lord, help us to maintain that integrity and even to look for that spiritual resurrection reaching to the status of spiritual maturity. So that if it is not thy word, if it is not thy mind that we are able to inculcate here, then what is the point of living in this world? Either we have to live like a citizen of heaven, or there is no need for us to live a life in this world. So to this end, Lord, as we are going to study, may Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. So the doctrine of the royal family of God, which you have been noticing through the definition, The Lord's strategic victory on the cross is resurrection, ascension, and session. Received his third royal patent, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the bright morning star, as told in Revelation 19.6.
But prior to that, what is the first royal title? As the manifest person of the Trinity, our Lord wears the crown of divine royalty. His royal title is Son of God. The members of his royal family are God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, with whom he has eternal and infinite coexistence. Lord Jesus Christ is descended from the lines of two of the sons of David by Bathsheba, which is his second royal title. The line of royal descendant from Solomon, listed in Matthew, ends with Joseph, who is not the real father of our Lord. The line of royal descendant from Nathan, given in Luke, comes down to Mary, our Lord's real human mother. Jesus is therefore Jewish royalty. His royal title is Son of David. So the first royal title is Son of God, family being God the Father and God the Son. And second royal title, Son of David, the royal family being the Davidic Israel. And number three, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the third royal title, the bright morning star. Who is this royal family? When our Lord received his third royal patent, he had no royal family to accompany the title. So a third royal family therefore had to be formed. God the Father interrupted the dispensation of the Israel and inserted the church age for the calling out which is formation, election of a royal family to accompany Christ's third royal title, which is all believers of the church age are the royal family of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, even Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, as told in Revelation 1.6. While regeneration has occurred in every dispensation since the beginning of time, it is the only regenerate of the church age who form this royal family. In fact, even if you consider the dispensation of the Old Testament time through Moses or Abraham or anyone, they belong to the Davidic son of David title. But we, the church, are so unique, followed through Apostle Paul being our ringleader. We are this royal family. And as fierce he was in his teaching, even John the Baptist was there. But he was being executed. These were the men of great authority in the word of the Lord. These were the men who knew what exactly is the word of the Lord and what they were preaching. Though they had such kind of a tough trials in their life. In fact, even when in the 150th AD, the Romans who were considering Christians as a sect, didn't even care them to look like the human nature that they were human beings. But rather they put him in the Colossums where in each and every dark room of that Colossum, they don't know what would have been waiting for them, either it is a lion, bear, or a dog, which could tear them apart into pieces. Then do you know what? Those martyrdom believers never forsook Christianity. And some of them were been hanged on the crosses, on the street road corners. You know why? Though it was in the night time when they put to burn, they could serve as lambs unto them. Such was a greater pain they suffered for you and for us. So that today we are having this doctrine. Bible being passed down the greatest centuries of all times of suffering. Now it is suffering with such kind of a false teachers who are occupying the pulpit. Because of this moron's attitude, not able to look to the truth from the original word. And calling themselves as denominations and rising heretic and rising apostasy to the core. How pathetic it is for us to understand these simple truths in the word of the Lord. How painful it is for us to give you an earnest plea or appeal. Get back to Exegiomai and dig the word of the truth. Learn the historical background and look how much they have been suffered for martyrdom in Christ. Irrespective of those 11 disciples and the 12th one being Apostle Paul as the one who is being born in the due season. Though they suffered that pain, there is nothing as we compare to the pain those these people have been suffering when they believed upon Christ as their Savior. These men who failed to realize the simple things these men who failed to take into heart what exactly is the word of the Lord to be put on the pulpit. The more we are suffering today in today's pulpit.
the apostate leaders rising emotionalism failure to learn dispensations failure to discern the defective and deceptive de defunct use of the spiritual gifts which were false in the past time before the completion of canon which is pre canon period which are present now in the post canon period like the pre canon period gifts like this miracles healing tongues apostleship prophecy gift knowledge or xyz whatever you name they were all seized and buried and when you have in the post canon period you have the gift of a pastor teacher you have an evangelist gift you have the gift of giving you have the gift of hospitality or administrations why because it has been given by the head of the church so that his flock could be fed with accurate word but you know what we are not even able to realize the difference between the church the body of Christ the bride of Christ or the temple in Christ far less we think we are preaching or handling the word with our false miracles like those three musicians who could do the first three plagues but they could never even come close to the seven remaining plagues because it was the divine power of Moses which Lord used through him to manifest his power that his things are always eternal none can duplicate it if you look today in the religion realm of hinduism or anyone or any shintoism or if not you look to the people of china korea japan or anywhere any part of the world you name it people being following all such kind of sorceries and black magic or necromancy to the core these are the works which are done by satan the same works of any religion in respect of christianity people are performing that in christian today and calling themselves please come to our crusades and meetings and give us money because we are begging money from you so that it is lord god the holy spirit who is stepping our leg with him but you know who is stepping that leg it is satan which is stepping through them it is not lord god the holy spirit because a woman preacher is never been allowed to have a stand in the pulpit a woman preacher is never even allowed to pray far less she thinks she can jump and talk around in tongues in the crowd these people they do not have any difference between this hinduisms or this so called cultisms of any part of the world bible doctrine is pure bible doctrine is ordained bible doctrine has a set of rules which we have to follow under the ministry of lord god the holy spirit if there is no gift for the woman to preach there is no gift that's it there ends the matter it is not that you try to alter you try to tell and you can why can't a woman cannot be used as a translator at least and lord calls it is a defiled place because of our menses then it is no way that you are going to even touch her during the period of our menses that's why when lord called to ordain those 70 elders what did he ordain he commanded them when they are supposed to come to the mount sinai he told to them no one should touch their wife for 3 days why are they not able to realize the simple truths how much pure lord wants to keep and of course you will ask me the quotation of galatians and say why is it lord says there is no difference between male and female and why are we so strictly following this pattern that male or female difference is regarding to their spiritual life that is an accomplishment fact for their salvation for their escrow contract that is spiritual life and for their resurrection god gives inseparably to them there is no give no greek irrespective of the rational species irrespective of the genderical species they are one they will be given in common to one it is not a power to preach in the pulpit but only for a male believer it is given authority to preach in the pulpit as the seven plagues stand apart for the glory of the lord so is the word of the lord a person who preaches exegesis categorical and isagogical in the pulpit people may think what i am telling to you all is very hard to take whether you take it or reject it but i am answerable to my lord for the ministry what he has given and the responsibility kept upon my shoulders no matter what may come no matter how the how the tables may fall or the pieces may fall apart but my work is to stick on and hang on to the integrity of my lord whether you take it accept it or reject it i don't care whether you listen to this i don't care but it is my duty to give to you i'm giving it and what you do that with, with that information it is left to you 
and regarding my personal life and my personal attributes and my personal thoughts, you have nothing to do with that. Because it is not the man, it is the message. It is always the words of the mouth. It is his message. It is not as foolishly people claim to think themselves that this guy should have a good, good testimony. Who are you to testify as and say that I am a good? In fact, even Lord Jesus Christ told, no one is good except God the Father. And that doesn't mean to say that Lord was been denying himself. It means to say that we are not the one to judge others. Because we are standing behind the judgment bars to be judged. When Christ could give us so great of authority of information for us to tell that even no one is called as a master or a rabbi or a good. How you can tell and say you can have a good testimony. Apostle Paul told you should have a good testimony for what? For the preaching of his spiritual resurrection. Reaching to the status of spiritual maturity. And when you truly love the Lord, you know how well to ordain your body, how well to obey His word, how well to be pure for His thought. Far less someone can give you a certificate saying that you are not righteous, you are not having good testimony, so that we will not hear your words. That is satanic and legalism to the core. A good testimony which Paul was telling to the Timothy was that he should preach the word, not to deviate the word but rather handle the word with accuracy. That is a good testimony what we should hold. And when you know what is the testimony, you will realize what is the difference. When Lord used to tell Abraham having his wife as Sarai and concubine as Kethura. When Lord God created man, he created one man and one woman, that's it. Additional wives, additional concubines. Though she is dead, you get married to other person. She is never called as a wife, but rather she will be called as a concubine. That is what the word clearly tells. The same thing even the book of the Paul tells to the Timothy. A man should be uh, one who is seeking to the office of bishop or overseer or deacon. He should be a wife. He should be a man of one wife. One wife at a time. When she is dead, she may, he may get married to other women. But she is nowhere termed as a concubine. But she is nowhere termed as a wife, but rather as a concubine. But keeping two, three women at a time is not eligible to be in the sight of the Lord. That's what the word of the Lord tells. Because they do not have that light. Because they do not have that love towards the Lord. That's why they are playing around with the Lord. Though she may be a wife, but she could become a concubine to him. So your personal life has nothing to do. It is the word of the Lord wherewith we are here to stand and to preach the message. And when you are in accuracy for the message, your personal life will get 100% right. Because you are living what you are talking. You are walking what you are talking. You are manifesting the glory and wisdom of God to these unbelievers as well. So the people get afraid to talk to you. In fact, even people get afraid when your shadow is going through there. That's what your personal life will be in Christ. Only when you are rooted and grounded in the love of my Lord. So coming back to the nomenclature. The nomenclature used for the royal family of God, number one church, which emphasizes the function of the royal family of God during the present dispensation. And the second one, body of Christ, which emphasizes the utilization of the same divine power and Bible doctrine used to sustain the humanity of Christ in hypostatic union. And number three, bride of Christ, which emphasizes the royal family of God after resurrection. And number four, the temple, which emphasizes the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. What is the basis for the royal family in the church age? The mechanics for the formation of this royal family is, number one, baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, at which time all believers of the church age are entered into union with Christ, as told in Romans 6, 3-4 and Acts 1, 5. In every dispensation, the believer is regenerated by the Holy Spirit at the moment he believes in Christ. But in the church age, at the moment he believes, the Holy Spirit also baptizes him into the body of Christ, as told in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. No believer before or after the church age receives the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism is unique to this dispensation.
salvation alone, as told in Colossians 1, 25-26. And what is the precedent for royalty? The order of battalion of Melchizedek priesthood provides both the pattern and the descendant. Precedent. Melchizedek acquired his royalty in becoming king of Salem, while Jesus Christ was born royalty in the line of David. And we, the relationship to the king, which is our royal high priest, as a member of the body of Christ, every believer of the church age is eternally and personally related to the King of Kings. Christ is the absolute ruler of the church. When the body of Christ is completed, the church age terminates with the resurrection or the rapture at which time the body of Christ becomes the bride of Christ. And what is the sign of royalty? The sign of royalty is the unprecedented universal indwelling of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That is what many people fail to understand these things. The so-called cultish people who are occupying in the Pentecostal realm or in the charismatic realm, they say that until and unless I am mine to you, are not going to be baptized. Until and unless you are not being baptized in the Holy Spirit, demonic possession is there for you. What a sheer out of a lie and blasphemy that is existing in today's Christendom, particularly in my country known as India. The sign of royalty is the unprecedented universal indwelling of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells the body of the church age, believers to provide a temple for the indwelling of Christ. Church age believers are indwelled forever, therefore they are royalty forever. The purpose of this indwelling is to glorify Lord Jesus Christ to the maximum as told in John 7, 37 through 39. So the church age believers are, are indwelled by this trinity forever. Therefore, they are royalty forever. That's it. That is what we have been called, alekainiketesis in the Greek. So security of royalty is what? The sealing ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, guarantees the eternal security of the church age believer. Personal sanctification places every church age believer in the palace which is for heaven forever and forever as told in Ephesians 1 3 to 4 and Ephesians 1 11. what is the function of royalty all church age believers are in full-time royal service for Christ as royal priests and royal ambassadors and this is what we have been telling to you all we are being called as an ambassadors for Christ at the same time giving the gift of a pastor teacher on our shoulders we are here to train you up so that your ambassadorship work could be effective your priesthood work should be effective so that your witnessing could be effective and even as such if there's an evangelist or a missionaries or even pastor teachers who are listening to this tape so that they can learn to the knowledge of the word and they also can become effective in their service wherewith they have been called. The believer fulfills the status quo of royalty in the modus operandi of the new priesthood as told in Hebrews 7 through 13. The believer must advance toward the objective of super grace at which time he receives the accoutments of royalty as well as the tactical victory of the angelic conflict. The future of royalty during the tribulation, the bride is prepared for operational footstool. The second phase of Christ's strategic victory, when all the enemies are put under his feet, as told in Hebrews 1.13. As members of the body of Christ and the royal priesthood, 1 Peter 2.9, all church believers will return with Christ to the second advent to participate in the strategic victory, to overflow, to overthrow the Satan and the millennium reign of Christ, as told in 1 Thessalonians 3.13 and Revelation 5.10. After the millennium, the royal family will be with Christ forever in the new heavens and the new earth and new Jerusalem, as told in Revelation 21. 22. And these last moments have been dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Because until and unless you fail to realize and to believe upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will never even come close to understand what is the royal family of God, what is to become trichotomous in nature, what it is to obey and to worship my Lord with that fear so that we can know what is our truth. It is not that with fear and trembling you are going to work out your own salvation as many foolishly claim, but salvation is an accomplished fact and what it is to become to be baptized with the Holy Spirit so that any one person who is speaking in tongues, even so you speak in tongues, so you have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. No way, no chance at all. In today's Christendom, this false doctrine is maximum to the core. People are become a prey for such kind of a things. But realize, we are having a spiritual life under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is also an accomplished fact. And resurrection is not cloning as foolishly the scientific era of today's Christendom has been teaching to them. Resurrection is what the same bodily resurrection therewith we will not be in sleep but we stand face to face before the Lord to do his work if it were not so Paul would have not been told it is gain for me to die and these things which are so deep to be understood Zachar Naik Levitov he can never understand these things until unless he believes in Christ and once again listens to the steps over and over but whereas to the believers and to the pastor teachers who are accompanying here I'm telling to you all 
learn exegeomai, learn the word, give, have reference towards the Lord and for his righteousness. So Father, we thank you for the privilege that are given to us to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in the things as we continue this tomorrow as well, so that our your knowledge to be advised through our lips could show forth your treasure.